Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Or as we'd say in the Old Testament, hallelujah. Praise to Yah. Now on this Easter Sunday, when we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, the victory over death and the grave, we listen to the words of Job in chapter 9. Now, ironically, the chapter that we have, the text that we read, tells us how Job was wishing that his words were written, that they were inscribed in a scroll. Why? So that others would hear and rejoice with Job, that posterity would know the promise of the Messiah, the one who would be the Redeemer who would overcome death in the grave. Now, this is vitally important because Job himself first-hand experience was dealing with the loss of life. Chapters 1 and 2 open up with Job losing family, losing friends. Death was imminent, all because of sin. The wage of sin is death. Job faced that reality, and he sits in ashes, saying that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Now, he sits in ashes, which is a fitting place to begin, Job, because that's actually where we begin our entire Lenten pilgrimage on Ash Wednesday, with ashes upon our head, recognizing, realizing that we are dust and dust we shall return, ashes to ashes. But in chapter 19, Job gives to us the promise of life in the midst of death, the rejoicing in the midst of suffering. And so what's the message that he proclaims? I know that my Redeemer lives, and he stands upon the earth, or more precisely, upon the dust. You see, Adam was originally formed from the dust of the ground. And because of sin, we return to the dust in the ground. But yet we have a Redeemer who lives, who has overcome death in the grave, who has Ray, who was raised from the ground to be found by his disciples so that they would proclaim that he has victory over death. I know that my Redeemer lives and he stands. When you stand again, you rise again instead of falling down and laying down in the ground, but standing upon the dust itself. And then Job goes further and he says, not only do I have this assurance that my Redeemer lives, the kinsman Redeemer, the one who has purchased me and won back, one who is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone and blood of my blood. But I myself have the hope of the resurrection of the body, that I too will see the one who lives who stands upon the dust. I'll see him even after my skin has been destroyed. I will see him in my own flesh. I will see him and I'll see him with my own eyes so that I can see the Savior in my resurrected body and rejoice in him eternally. But that rejoicing will begin now in the midst of this life in sorrow and suffering, but yet we know that Jesus has overcome the world. Thanks for watching us talk at you. If you want to see us talk at you some more, subscribe to see notifications when we talk at you the next time. Donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. Help us to help you. And if you like this video, check out our website at higherthings.org and check out more content from Higher Things.